Das ist mein comfy chair. Ah, that's bad. Today we're talking about the Panzerkampfwagen 2, also known by its proper name, the Panzer II. Because in episode 4 of my Battlestorm Stalingrad documentary, I was talking about the Panzer and tank numbers on both sides, and this apparently is proof, proof of my bias and agenda and intellectual dishonesty and a load of other stuff that was written about me, and proves, proves that I'm somehow favourable to the Russians or the Soviets or I'm a Marxist or something. Uh, right, bearing in mind in episode 6, I was then accused of being pro-German and or a Nazi and racist. Um, you know, because that's how that works. But no, in episode 4, I was pro-Soviet uh, because I said, and in fact, well, let's just play the clip. The Red Army would no longer enjoy the 5 to 1 superiority in tanks that they'd had in the previous few weeks. They would now face panzer forces of roughly equal strength in numbers. Which is clearly not good, especially when we consider that many of the remaining tanks were light tanks. As an example, 22nd Tank Corps' three brigades mustered 37 light tanks on the 1st of August, compared to 19 T-34s. Its 176th Brigade was down to just five tanks in total, so clearly, if they couldn't take on the Germans with a 5 to 1 superiority in numbers, how could they face them with equal numbers and with light tanks? So that clip was enough to prove how pro-Soviet and biased and how much I hate the Germans and, and blah 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 um, that I am, apparently. Uh, no. So the idea, So my argument, half of the Soviet tanks are, t are, are T-34s, but half of them are T-60s and T-70s, light tanks. Thus, if they have roughly equal numbers of tanks and half of the Soviet tanks are light tanks, that proves that the Germans have an advantage when it comes to tanks. That was my argument. But we had people in the comment section, Veraboos, Nazis, pro-Germans, blah blah blah, people who hate the Soviet Union, all saying, no, Tick's being intellectually dishonest because he's not mentioning the Panzer II. So Tick, what about the Panzer II? Right, so the Panzer II is a light tank, great. But if you look at the numbers, you will still find that very few, or a small proportion, of the German tanks were in fact Panzer IIs. So, my point still stands. If half of the Soviet tanks are light tanks, and only a small fraction are Panzer IIs, then the Germans have an advantage when it comes to the medium tanks. Before we get to the numbers, which we're about to get into, I just want to point out, some people were saying that the Panzer III was a light tank. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's actually a medium tank. So, no, anyone saying, no, the Panzer III is a light tank and lost that proof? No, no, you guys are completely off. But those who say, no, no, half or whatever of the, of the German tanks of Panzer IIs, you were way off as well. So let's look at the numbers now. So in the video, we were on the 1st of August 1942, so I'm going to be referring to the strength returns of the 1st of August 1942. I was talking about the 6th Army, but we will look at the 4th Panzer Army as well, uh, at least a little bit. So... In the 6th Army, you have two Panzer Battalions at this time, and two Panzer Divisions. Uh, the Panzer Battalions were the 103rd Panzer Battalion of 3rd Motorized Division. This had 9 Panzer IIs, 25 Panzer III long barrels, 5 Panzer IV long barrels for a percentage of Panzer IIs of 23% on the 1st of August 1942. Then you have the 160th Panzer Battalion of the 60th Motorized Division, 12 Panzer IIs, 31 Panzer III long barrels, and three Panzer IV long barrels for a percentage Panzer IIs of 26%. Uh, the 16th Panzer Division, and I couldn't find strength returns for, the, for any time in August, actually, so I've only got the 8th of July, which isn't ideal, but still, the percentage is what matters here. 13 Panzer IIs, 47 Panzer IIIs, 27 Panzer IVs, four Command Panzers, which I'm not sure what they were, but... We'll just, I'm, I'm just taking them as if they're not Panzer IIs, but they could have been, whatever, it doesn't matter. Percentage of Panzer IIs, 14.3%. Obviously, if the Command Panzers were not Panzer threes or fours, then that percentage goes up, but I don't know. Uh, 24th Panzer Division. Again, I don't have strength returns for the first week of August, so I've got two strength returns. I'm going to look at both. The strength on the 28th of June 1942 was 32 Panzer IIs, 
112 Panzer III's, 32 Panzer IV's, and 7 Command Panzers. Again, not sure what the Command Panzers were, but the percentage of Panzer IIs are 17.5%. On the 18th of August 1942, so this is after the battles on the Don Bend, where they, they've taken losses, uh, you get a strength return of the tw uh, 28 Panzer IIs, 30 Panzer III short barrels, 23 Panzer III long barrels, 5 Panzer IV short barrels, 3 Panzer IV long barrels, and 5 Command Panzers, with a percentage of Panzer IIs of 29.8%, which is very high. Um, so that's it for the 6th Army. We'll come back to the totals in a minute. But 4th Panzer Army has the 129th Panzer Battalion in the 29th Motorized Division. Uh, I don't have stats for the 1st of August, but I do have it for the 3rd of August because they didn't write it down, I don't think. Uh, there's no, there is no stats listed, so I'm assuming they didn't write it down. But anyway, 10 Panzer IIs, 32 Panzer III long barrels, 7 Panzer IV long barrels for a percentage of Panzer IIs of 20%. I couldn't find stats for the 14th Panzer Division. So really, uh, the only thing I've got for 4th Panzer Army is 129th Panzer Battalion at a percentage of 20%. So 4th Panzer Army, 20%. <clears throat> 6th Army, if you take uh, the Panzer Battalions for the 1st of August, 14th Panzer Division for the 8th of July, and the 24th Panzer Division on the 28th of June, had a total of 359 total tanks, uh, roughly at this period. Uh, 66 of which were Panzer IIs, which is a percentage of Panzer IIs of 18.38%. Uh, Sixth Army again, but this time with the 24th Panzer Division on the 18th of August, had a, a total of 270 total tanks, which is not quite what we said in the video. I think we said 300, so we can imagine a few more actually, but never mind. Uh, 62 of which are Panzer IIs, um, but again, if if there was an extra 30 tanks, which there roughly was on the 1st of August, then this suggests that 24th Panzer Division actually had more Panzer 3s and 4s, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so the percentage of Panzer 2s at this point would be 22.96%. So even at the best case scenario for the people who are advocating the Panzer 2, you've got a strength total of 22.96%, which isn't, it's still, it's not even a third. So yeah. Uh, the total overall uh, for the 24th Panzer Division on the 28th of June, but total overall, including 4th Panzer Army, um, was 408 total tanks, 76 of which were Panzer IIs, with a percentage of Panzer IIs of 18.62%. Uh, total number two, if you do it on the 18th of August for 24th Panzer Division, is 319 total tanks, 72 of which are Panzer IIs, percentage of Panzer IIs, 22.57%. But we were specifically looking at the 6th Army, so the percentages are either 18.38% or 22.96%. And I'm going to favour the 18, and the reason why, um, the 24th Panzer Division, for some reason, had a lot of Panzer IIs. Uh, if you look at the 16th Panzer Division versus the Panzer, uh, 24th Panzer Division uh, for June and July, the 16th Panzer Division had 13 Panzer IIs, whereas the 24th Panzer Division had 32. Why they were assigned that many, I have no idea, because that's way more than you know any of the other Panzer Divisions and Battalions in the 6th Army, but whatever. Um, but the 32 Panzer IIs on the 28th of June, okay, 28 of them, so all but four, survived until the 18th of August, nearly two months later, which that's proof that they were rel relying mainly on the Panzer IIIs and Panzer IVs. Uh, to carry the day against the enemy tanks. So the point I'm making here is that, okay, we were referring to the first week of August. So on the first week of August, they would have had more Panzer threes and Panzer fours than the percentage, uh, you know, than they had on the 18th of August. Obviously, otherwise they wouldn't have, lo you know, they would, they've lost more as they were going on as time progressed. So the percentage of Panzer twos would have been less on the 1st of August than it was on the 18th of August, if that makes sense. So it would have been like 25 or even 20%, depending, you know, we don't know, but it would have been something like that, because otherwise they wouldn't have been able to, you know, during the Dom bat battles, they lost tanks, and they, and they mainly lost Panzer threes and fours. so that means there was more in combat, which means the percentage of Panzer twos was less. 
Um, so it's bearing that in mind. So I actually think that as a total, around 20% of the tanks in the 6th Army were Panzer IIs, roughly speaking, uh, depending on the date. So in the video when I said, okay, half of the Soviet tanks are light tanks, which gives the Germans an advantage, this is true because if roughly 20% of the 6th Army is Panzer IIs, okay, and they have a rough parity, so 20% of Panzer II, which is the light tanks, versus 50% of the enemy tanks, okay? So that meant that the Germans had 30% more uh, heavy, uh, medium tanks, sorry. They had 30% more medium tanks than their enemy. Uh, so that's a significant advantage during this period. Obviously, it changes over time. Obviously, there's reinforcements, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just saying, for this specific week, I wasn't incorrect, or I don't think I was incorrect, for stating that half of the enemy tank, half of the Soviet tanks are light tanks compared to mostly medium tanks for the Germans. So I don't think I'm being intellectually dishonest, but maybe I am. Maybe you could let me know how intellectually dishonest I am in the comment section below. Another debate that came up was regarding one of the quotes that was in the video where the, uh, the lady speaking, who was a Russian lady, she was saying how the Luftwaffe pilots were not issued with parachutes and thus they bailed out their aircraft and just landed on the floor uh, in a big mess because they didn't want the pilots to be captured. And people were like, is this true? Is this not true? Can you confirm it? Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I can't, I can't neither confirm nor deny it. But what I can tell you is that it came from this book here, uh, Turning Point, which is by a, a Russian or Soviet author. Uh, and there is actually another quote in this book on page 164, where another Russian veteran from the Battle of Stalingrad confirms that another plane came down, I believe it was a bomber, and three or four of the uh, crew people were captured by the Russians or the Soviets and taken into custody. So unless they were able to fly, uh, I think they were issued with parachutes in that instance. So now we have two Russian veterans from the battle contradicting each other and I'm not sure what's going on here. My personal belief or my personal interpretation of it is either it was a rumor at the time going around that the Luftwaffe didn't issue parachutes to their guys uh, because, you know, just in case they got captured, that could be it, it could be a rumor, or, and I think this is more likely, um, some of the German pilots decided not to wear their parachutes because they didn't want to get captured. That makes sense. There's a third possibility. It could be, um, or there's four possibilities. The third possibility could be that there was a lack of parachutes. They just just didn't have enough to go around. That could be one. Uh, or alternatively, the quote where the lady said that, she was just either lying or didn't know, and she just guessed. I don't know. Maybe she was making it up. Um, so there's a few possibilities. I tend to favor the idea that the pilots decided not to wear it, you know, because they wanted to... They didn't want to get captured. That makes sense. Um, and that would say, well, okay, a few pilots didn't put parachutes on, but most of them did or, or whatever. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. If anyone knows one way or another, and if anyone has any other sources on it, let us know in the comments section below. People were complaining about me mispronouncing names like Hoff. Is it Hoff? Is it Hot? Is it Hort? If you go into Forvo, the guy's pronouncing it, it sounds like Hort, which is what I said in the final episode. So I'm not sure if it's one, Hoth, two, Hot, or three, Hoth. If anyone can let me know, is it one, two, or three? Top, middle, or bottom, let me know. Um, there was also a bit of a discussion about this unit, the 255th Cavalry Regiment, um, which has got green and a yellow part. And then people are like, what's going on here? Can you explain it? So on and so forth. So I will. Uh, the, the green part, so Forget the yellow part for a minute. The green is actually the flag of Chechen Chechnya. Chechen Chechnya. I don't know how you say it properly. Um, where it, during the Second World War there was persecution going on. The Soviet state was attacking the Chechens. They were trying to rebel against the state, and the state was like, "No, no, you're part of the Soviet Union now. Tough you." Uh, so <laughs> that that was kind of like a little war going on. But this cavalry unit was actually Chechens, and um, so I wanted to kind of differentiate it from the Soviets. Even though they're on the Soviet side at this point, as in this unit was, I wanted to kind of differentiate it. 
So I did the green and then I put the yellow on, the yellow part being the cavalry part. If we get Pliev's um, uh, cavalry core going, you can see the yellow part is actually just the cavalry symbol. That's what it is. So that's the reason why it's like that. And I kind of, I'm glad I did this because it, it makes the unit a bit more unique. If you look at the German units, um, a lot of them, okay, they're all gray, but they've all got like little, most of them have got little symbols dedicated to the division, right? So that, you know, 24 Panzer Division has got its leaping horseman symbol. So I, I like that because it makes the units more unique, right? And especially with the, with the, with the Soviets where most of the units don't have commanders, and most of the units are just plain rifle divisions or whatever. And so it's just the same thing over and over again. It's just red, red, red with the cross. And it's like, ah, uh, you know, I want to make these units more unique. So I thought this is a great opportunity. I can turn this unit into a green cavalry unit with the, with the yellow symbol and just make it a bit more unique. And apart from the guards divisions, which have got stars on, and apart from the 10th NKVD division, which we'll see later, uh, there isn't really much variety when it comes to the Soviet units. So I took this opportunity and I wish I could do this more. I wish I could make the Soviet units a bit more unique, but I can't think of ways to do it. If anyone's got any ideas, let me know because, you know, we can add some of these unique ideas into it and see what we can come up with. Um, but I can't think of any at the top of my head. If I do come up with any, you'll see it. Uh, that's for sure. Final point, which is controversial again. Uh, so in episode six, I think it was, I said that Stalin forbade the evacuation of Stalingrad, and so the citizens were forced to stay and thus die uh, for the state. People were not happy with that. They complained in the comments section saying how I was being intellectually dishonest, biased, pro-German, blah, 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 all that other stuff. Uh, and, and I was making stuff up. <sighs> right. I have been working on the script for season three this entire week, episode seven, eight, nine. Uh, currently, in episode nine, at the end of it, I will be discussing the bombing of Stalingrad on the 23rd of August. It might get shifted to season four, episode 10, um, because I'm, the script's not finished yet, but I, th I think it's going to be episode nine. When we get to episode nine or 10, whenever it is, and we get to that part where we're discussing the bombing of the city of Stalingrad on the 23rd of August, I will address the issue of whether Stalin forbade the evacuation of Stalingrad or not, because I've done a ton more research, including once again, good old Popov with his turning point. Uh, I've looked at Soviet sources, both primary and secondary. I've looked at uh, uh, German sources, primary and secondary. I've looked at what other authors have said, what other historians have said, so on and so forth. And I have come to a conclusion, uh, one way or another, and I will address it in full with as much detail, as many sources as possible. I literally put tons of sources into this because I was like, no, people, people are complaining. I need to look into this more. So that's what exactly what I've done. And it's in that episode. So I'm not going to address it here. You just need to wait for that episode to happen. And I will address it there. So... There might be another video this week. I'm not sure. If not, I'll see you next Monday, or you'll see me at least. So thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting if you're a patron. Bye for now.